This episode of Tech Thing is brought to you by Dell. Hey everyone, Shannon Morse here at CES 2019. I finally made my way to the show floor. It's about time, given that it's, what day is it? Oh, well, we're already on Wednesday. Oh gosh, it's already Almost Wednesday. Almost the end. <laughs> I'm joined by one of my very good friends, David Randolph. We had him on last year to talk about 3D printers, so I thought it would be a good idea to kind of go over what's been happening in 3D printers for the past year. and. One of the things that I noticed immediately was the fact that this space has kind of gotten smaller this year as well at CES. Every year for about the last three years, uh, it's been getting progressively smaller and smaller. And I think it's primarily because um, the industry as a whole has finally recognized that 3D printers are not going to be that device that's sitting in your kitchen next to your toaster. Oh. They actually serve purposes. They actually develop products. They're they're for the DIYers, the tinkerers, the makers, the companies, the education, things like that. They're not going to be the thing, press print and you'll get that product printed on your desktop anymore. And because this is the consumer electronic show, they're not seeing as many consumers. They're seeing the devices more at the 3D printer like spaces, the 3D printer convention. Yeah, the more, the more traditional manufacturing 3D printer stuff. Uh, ex uh, examples of events like MRF, which is the Midwest Rep Rap Festival, oh. and Earth, which is the East Coast Rep Rap Festival. MRF and Earth. They they <laughs> both come out for both of them. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting because there's it's no way a reflection of the 3D printing industry is getting smaller. In fact, it's the opposite. It's getting much larger. Okay. Um, our company has seen huge growth in the last year uh, as far as printers and sales and all that stuff. And just about every other company has seen giant growths and leaps and bounds. But they're not going into this generic consumer market anymore. Understood. However, there's still stuff here. That's what I was going to ask. We did see a few really cool things, um, specifically filaments. So uh, one of the interesting companies that always comes out to this is a company called Polymaker. And uh, they've been known for their PC Max, which is a polycarbonate filament. Um, really great filament, but the Max is kind of this uh, nanoparticle going inside of it that makes it an even stronger polycarbonate. Well, they've moved that over into their PETG filaments, which the PETG is a little more reasonable for people to print with. Polycarbon is a little higher temp, a little harder to work with. Yeah. But PETG is extremely popular, and they've released this much tougher version of it. And they've also expanded their line. They, they, they got all the other kind of interesting stuff. They've got a, a glass-filled nylon filaments. They've got carbon fiber nylon filaments so this cool. year. They've got a new, new their, their own PVA filament. The water is dissolvable filaments, yeah. which is out there. That's amazing. So uh, that was kind of that was really nice to see for them. Uh, they're one of the few people that actually made kind of an, a CES announcement. Yeah. Everyone else has been announcing at the other shows. Now we have heard some announcements over the past year from some of the companies that are here. They aren't specifically showing new things here. There might be just a few upgrades to their 3D printer models or things like that. But what are some of the cool things that you have seen happen in the past year with 3D printing? Well, uh, for example, um, Race3D is here with their printer and they actually updated it uh, very early uh, last year, uh, after, pretty much right after last year's CES, uh, new 32 bit controller, new dual head design, one head raises and lowers, so you actually cool. get to some uh, really, actually it's both heads raise and lower in this case, but it uh, really helps with dual uh, filament printing. Mm -hmm. They've made it uh, print about 35% faster, wow. um, but in the same form factors and the same type of things, new build plate designs. So they've, they've, they've kind of upped their game as far as their printer has been working. Um, another interesting thing that's happening in the printers, and um, I think this is, uh, you're seeing the bigger companies or the, the other businesses make little subsectors. So, for example, uh, Kodak brought out their printer this year. Yeah, I'm so excited about that one. Yeah, last year they brought the prototype and um, they, they sent us one a little bit early and they asked us to look over it and, you know, do advice. And now they're getting close to the production one and they took um, all of our notes that we gave them about how to arrange their tool head and how to do their extruder setup, yeah. and they put it all in there. Um, what? So it's it's really starting Wait, to shape up. Wait, can you tell me printer. that on on recording? I can tell you that. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> but um, you know, it, they're they're they, they put a lot of that into their design, and it's it's really made for a nice machine. That's awesome. Um, the other inter company that came out is Polaroid even released their printer. Oh. So we got the two companies that are known for their cameras and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think what it's going to do is that over the next uh, next year or so it's going to make a bigger push for color uh, consistency. Good. Right now with filaments, if you buy the same color from the same company and it was made on a different day, mm -hmm. the color might be slightly off. Yes. We're not seeing a lot of good color consistencies out there until you get into much higher in brands. 
that's going to be really important for people like cosplayers or if you're a business and you're printing like very specific items like your logo or something like that, you want to make sure that the colors are extremely consistent. Oh, uh, uh, that's a major thing and we're starting to see a lot of companies actually do color matching services finally. Oh, cool. Uh, it's, it's not an easy process to actually do coloring for filaments. Oh. Um, so it's, it's, it's very difficult. It's not like printer color or anything like that. Really? Uh, uh, um, um, additives and stuff like that actually affect the quality of the filament. So they have to go through oh. fairly long processes, but there's companies like Color Fab that are doing, um, um, and a couple of other companies that are going to be announcing over the next year cool. color matching services where you can actually give them raw color values at whatever scale you want, and they can actually match the filament to that, and it'll print in that color. The filament on the roll might be slightly different, but it'll print to that color. So it sounds like we're hearing a lot about the filaments, the types of materials that you can print with, not so much on the 3D printer devices themselves. Yeah, uh, printers right now in the FDM world, that's the standard you know, 3D printer most of us are thinking about, it's getting really hard to make revolutionary hardware or something yeah, that... it's already gotten to that point. It's, it, it's, it's already revolutionary. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty well built. I mean, we're, we're seeing some subtle ones, Yeah. but uh, it's pretty well built. The filaments, though, the materials is getting uh, crazy because now people are getting material science, uh, material scientists now. Uh, up till now, it's been, you know, guys in their garage, you know, melting or stuff down. Or ladies in their garage. Ladies in their garage as well, <laughs> melting stuff down. Yeah. And um, just kind of making plastic and now we're starting to see some real science get behind it and get really into um, the additives, the extrusion process, um, every little aspect of production. So we're seeing That's a cool. huge increase in filament designs. Well, what are you excited to see? Um, what, what I'm excited to see is that we're going to see a lot more in the firmware and 32-bit controllers over the next year. Oh, really? Be, um, we'll, we'll see a lot of that Ooh. because um, all of the major firmware contributors out there have, are having are finishing up their 32-bit versions oh. or have already released them. So oh, we're seeing nice. a lot of that. So we're going to see a lot better hardware. We're going to see a lot more integration. That's good. Um, right now, a, a huge majority of printers are still in 8-bit mode. Yeah. So, and that's really keeping it's things a little behind. It's been that while for a while, hasn't Pretty it? Pretty much since the beginning. Way? Okay. So we're going to see better controllers and better um, software interpolation, things like that. That's good. We're starting to see a couple of uh, people play with AI on the 3D printers, which <gasps> is going to be interesting. That's kind of interesting. It's still young, but yeah. it's going to be interesting. That's cool. Um, so there was a couple of people here showing off demo models of the idea of having a camera pointed at the bed, and if your printer goes wrong yeah. or the print's not coming out just right, it uh, watches it and um, compares it to the model and helps correct for it. No way! So we're seeing oh, a lot of that. that sounds awesome! Okay, I can't wait to, till that technology comes to market. Until it, it's almost standardized. Yes, exactly. That's a software problem. Yes, <laughs> well, hopefully we see it fixed soon. Yes! <laughs> well, thank you so much, David. I really appreciate it. Where can people find you if they're interested? Well, they can uh, check me out at, you know, printedsolid.com is our store. Um, we're also on Twitter at Printed Solid, and we're also on Facebook at Printed Solid. You know, we're, we're the standard social media company you see out there. And you sell some amazing products and you also do a lot of education as well. We do a lot of education. We also do a lot of manufacturing in-house, yeah. uh, things like that. We have our own filament line now, which is a lot of fun. He does sales during the hol holidays, by the way. Yes, we do. <laughs> a little crazy. So you should keep an eye on the Twitter account. I definitely was. Definitely. <laughs> and where can people find you personally if they have any questions about 3D printing? Uh, well, they can find me uh, either through the Printed Solid account, or they can mm -hmm. also find me on Twitter. Uh, the handle is D Randolph, D R A N D O L P H. You can usually hit me up on now. Cool. Well, for more CES 2019 coverage, I keep on thinking 2018 because it's <laughs> it's the New Year's basically. 2019 coverage. Check out Tech Thing over at YouTube.com/TechThing, and don't forget to subscribe because we have tons of content coming out this week. See you next time. Hey, David. You hear about Alienware's new products? Oh, please, tell me everything. Ooh, the M17 and the M15. Both of those laptops come equipped with NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 2080 Max-Q graphics, brand new, with support for Intel's Core i9K processors and dynamic overclocking. So both of those machines are built for power and durability. Also, portability as well, because that's very important to me. Both the 15-inch and 17-inch models, they also stay true to that epic design while introducing thin and light to the gaming portfolio as well. The Alienware M15 and M17 gaming laptops will be available January 29th, so learn more over at Dell.com, and we thank Dell for their support of TechThing. Cool. I'll have to get two. <laughs>